What's up, folks? Welcome back to another episode of the show. This one is a little bit different. This is actually an episode that uh, recorded last year as a guest on a podcast called the Signature 76 Podcast. And it's pretty cool to, to look back and kind of listen to some of the topics we were discussing. Obviously, this was when Donald Trump was still president and there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. So I uh, came across this episode and uh, once again, it wasn't my podcast. I was a guest on this podcast. So I wanted to post it up here to give you guys an opportunity to listen to it, see if you get any value out of it. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy. And uh, until next time, everybody, keep those minds free. Just rolling with it. Awesome. So Dave Hurt, thanks so much for coming on the podcast, brother. Happy to have you on. Happy to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. So let's take it from the, the very beginning. I mean, I know you're a very patriotic guy. Um, has it always kind of been like this? Because just kind of from my, you know, in my example, I haven't always been like super, super like, you know, patriotic. But, you know, since 2021 and all the or 2020 and all the craziness going on with that, that's really kind of just amplified, you know, how I feel towards, you know, America and everything else. I'm curious to hear what you think about that and how it's been for you. Yeah, man. So, you know, 2020 definitely, I think, has has pulled it out of a lot of us more so in, in terms of at least being outspoken about it. But, you know, I've always been a proud American, a patriot. You know, I've, I've loved everything about what we as a country stand for. I just never thought it was anything that I had to fight for or talk about because I just assumed it was sort of a shared value of, of every American. Uh, but I think 2020 has brought to light, you know, th that's not necessarily the case for a lot of people. And, you know, unfortunately, folks are, are sort of told from an early age that America is, is bad for so many reasons. But, you know, I, I grew up poor as shit in a trailer park, you know, 16 year old drug addict parents. And because America is what it is, you know, I was able to still make something of myself. And, and so I've always uh, appreciated our everything we stand for from free speech to the Second Amendment. And I mean, there's just there's just nothing else like it in the world. And so, yeah, I've always I've always felt that way. Yeah, I know you kind of your claim to fame kind of at least got you a little <laughs> bit of exposure on uh, social media, at least was the uh, sign picture, right? That went viral. Yeah, that was that was crazy. So Basically, I'm a, I'm a nutrition coach and I post a lot of training videos and, and nutrition related content and stuff. And when COVID started, I was getting some questions and pushback about why are you training and recording videos without a mask? Okay, so I posted a video response to that talking about how a cloth mask can be a liability in the gym setting, right? All the different ways that it can spread disease. And I said, look, you, you need to make your own decisions, but this is why I've decided not to wear a mask. And I talked about some studies and stuff like that that had been done and uh, didn't think anything of it, man. Uploaded the video just kind of like I felt like I owed it to my clients and stuff to tell them why I wasn't wearing a mask in the gym. And there was tons of blowback. I mean, I, I lost nutrition clients. People blocked me, unfriended me, you know, called me a piece of, you know, expletive word. And um, I was just totally caught off guard by it, man. Like, I, I'm familiar for sure with cancel culture and the fact that it exists and all this stuff. But it was the first time I'd ever felt it. And so as a response to that, just on a whim, I posted this post holding up the, the original sign, which was, we can disagree and still be friends. And it was really targeted at like my actual friends, my clients, the people that had basically dis disowned me just because I was working out without a mask on and didn't think anything of it again, you know, just uploaded it. And, um, it really went viral on Facebook. Um, and like, after a couple of days, it had been shared a thousand times. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool, you know. Um, but then after a couple more days, like 10,000, 100,000, and um, it ended up being shared like a million times. And and I was just like, holy crap, man, that's, A, that's pretty crazy. You never expect that to happen. And then B, you know, it must have been a message that resonated with people. And, and I think that 2020 pulled that out of people as well, like saying, hey, look, man, like just because... I'm a Republican, you're a Democrat, I'm a Libertarian, you're a Republican, whatever. Um, that doesn't mean we can't still be friends or, you know, just because I choose to live my life this way doesn't mean you can't be my friend. But people have kind of taken it to that extreme. They've said, look, if, if we're ideologically different, I'm sorry, you know, cancel, block, get rid of. And it's like, man, that's 
very un-American and it really caught me off guard. And, you know, after that, I was basically like, anytime I want to say something or put a message out there, I'll just throw it up on a sign and, and make a post. So it's kind of become like something I'm quote known for, even though I didn't really intend for it to be. It's a good idea. The whole sign thing. I think they're just jealous of the beard, to be honest. Hey man, um, <laughs> maybe who knows? Um, I am. <laughs> How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. What's that? How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. Two. Twenty-two. All right. Well, I don't think I had much of a beard then either. So. All right. You, that gives me a little bit of hope. hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But I heard uh, masks with with beards are an absolute nightmare. I mean, yeah. plus I can't breathe. I can't breathe when I'm wearing a mask. Yeah, it's there's a number of reasons. I mean, look, with the cloth mask, I mean, there was a reason that Fauci in the beginning said, don't wear them. They're, they're not helpful. And, you know, all, all kinds of stuff behind that. But um, a cloth mask specifically, if if you are carrying the virus, you're it's just absorbing the virus. Right. So it's like a sponge when you touch it and adjust it and go touch a piece of equipment. What You're just spreading it. Right. So that was my reason. I was like, I'd rather just not have this virus soaked sponge on my face and I'll just breathe normally and socially distance and wipe everything down. And that to me made a lot more sense in the gym. And I explained all of that and, and people were just like, Oh, you you know, piece of shit. I hate you. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, wow, you guys have really drank the Kool-Aid here because I'm telling you scientifically why I'm choosing not to do this. And, and I'm a horrible person for it. So, you know, it's whatever, man. It's kind of scary though. that People don't even want to listen to that. You know what I mean? It's dangerous. It really is. It's really dangerous. People don't want to listen to common sense. And and that's the biggest problem I had with all of it was like, why can't we just have a conversation? You know, why can't we just talk about it? I'll give my reasons. You give yours. At the end of the day, we'll still be friends and then we'll move on. But it's, it's really been uh, extreme in terms of people disowning people, getting rid of friends, you know, like just... I mean, and I had people that, I mean, I knew from high school and I'm 33 years old, people I knew from high school who were friends who just decided based off of that, that they no longer wanted to be my friend anymore. And it was just insane, man. Totally insane. Off of you not wearing a mask when you're not even around them. They don't want to be friends with you anymore. Right. Off of me not wearing a mask in a video, you know, like, and most of my videos were at my home gym. Like, okay, sorry about that. You know? Yeah, I see people driving up the road with a mask on in the car by themselves. I just laugh. Well, oh, of course, or like walking around in in the middle of the day, bright sunlight. You know, yeah. UV light kills kills the virus, but you know who cares? Let me wear a mask because I'm signaling my virtue, and that's what it's become now, man. It's become a symbol of I'm a better person than you because I'm more virtuous and I care about other people. And people have thrown common sense out the window a long time ago. Yeah, no, I mean, that's it. Like I said, it gets really dangerous when that starts happening. And I don't understand the whole group, you know, mob mentality when it comes to that. You know, if you're not working right. past your evil, you're killing people. We'll I, it's really just out. become a symbol of what side you're on, I think, you know, in, in terms of political ideology, right versus left, et cetera. And, and most people aren't really thinking about the science behind why or why not they're wearing it. I mean, I think the people, who are not wearing it, maybe a little more so, to be quite honest, based on conversations I've had. But, you know, the WHO and the CDC have both said now that masks don't really make a difference. We've looked at the numbers. You know, I'll give you an example. I'm in South Carolina and um, I'm right on the state line between North and South Carolina. So I go up to North Carolina a lot. Very different states. North Carolina is a blue state. South Carolina is a red state. South Carolina, no mask mandates no real lockdowns the whole time. My gym's been open pretty much since the beginning of COVID. Um, North Carolina, the exact opposite, right? Lockdown, mask mandates, all this stuff, curfew, nine o'clock curfew right now in North Carolina, which is nuts. I guess the virus comes out, you know, really late. Um, <laughs> so. But you look at the difference between the two states and there's no significant difference in the number of cases or deaths or anything. So what that tells me is, why not just let the state be open and not be devastated economically if there's no true difference in the numbers, you know, but who am I? Right. Yeah. I mean, like every other virus that we've had since the beginning of time, I mean, exactly. you should be able to decide whether you want to leave the house or, you know, wear a mask or any of that kind of stuff. Right. That's, right. That's where it starts getting kind of, you know, where it starts pissing regular people off is because, you know, we don't, I don't, I know you don't either. I don't care if someone wears a mask when they're working out. 
Just don't no. tell me what to do. Right, huh? right. And, and if you are sick, I mean, look, if you're high risk and it bothers you to be around someone who's not wearing a mask, then stay at home. All right. But imposing your will on others is not the way to go. And it, it never has been. I mean, that's not the American way. You know, that, that's not live and let live. And that's all I've been saying is like, you know, I don't care what you want, you know, just you do your thing. I'll do my thing. And then we'll get through this together as we always have under this system of, of government government that we have in America and this way of life that we have in America. And, um, you know, thank goodness I live in South Carolina, which is very, has been very, you know, relaxed in terms of all the, the mandates and everything. But I can't imagine living somewhere like New York or California. You know, I go up to New Jersey quite often for my podcast and um, it's totally different up there. I mean, everything is still really tight and locked down. I mean, you know, Ian Smith is up there with his gym and he's been fighting you know, 15 K a day in fees and all this crazy shit. And it's like, man, I think if anything, it's really taught us the importance of state level government. You know, I think before COVID people didn't really realize how significant their governor is, how important their state legislature is. And now, now that they actually experience, Oh crap, I can't leave my house after nine o'clock. They're like, okay, let me, let me, think a little bit more about this local election next time. So if anything, maybe that's come out of it. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Um, back to the mask thing. What would you, what advice before we move on from that, what advice would you give to someone who's, you know, might feel the same way as both of us, but you know, might be, you know, a little bit nervous to, you know, stand up and just walk into a building where they're the only person not wearing a mask. I mean, I've been the only person doing that many times. I know you yeah. probably have too. Yeah. I have. And, you know, look, I'm, I'm not, again, I'm never going to tell anybody how to live, what they should do. But, you know, any advice I would have regarding that is you've just got to do what makes you comfortable. And if, if you're truly not comfortable, put a mask on. You know, I think that, I think that um, obviously to an extent, like if a private business wants you to wear a mask, like that's their prerogative and they, they can do that under the law. All you, all you have to decide is do I or do I not want to um, patronize this business, right? So I, I think that you just got to do what you're comfortable with, man. And, you know, I've, um, I have a mask and I, I do wear it sometimes if need be. Like if I'm um, around, if I know I'm going to be around old people who are uncomfortable, like, you know, be considerate of others, but also don't, you know, s squash your own personal freedom to, to make a mob happy. So you got to walk that fine line. I mean, I think it's just, it's just a case by case thing, dude. And, and, you know, I'm personally, you know, the way I look or whatever, like I, I, I have no problem just walking in somewhere and generally people don't say anything to me, but, um, yeah. I get it. If, if somebody's not comfortable with it, like, don't, don't feel like you have, have to be a hero, you know, just, just live your life and, and do what you, what you're comfortable with. Yeah, that's that's a great answer. Um, I know, I think you follow Sean Whalen and Ian Smith. Oh, yeah. all those guys. Yeah, I think we kind of follow the same kind of kind of guys. Um, a lot of those dudes are are just hell bent against you know, like the the sign of wearing a mask. If that makes sense. Like what it like stands for. Like why is that kind of significant? I don't know if you feel the same way. Or yeah, I do. You know, personally, I do. And again, like I, I'm not going to tell other people how they should do it. And, and I think, you know, Sean and Ian would agree because that's the central tenet of all this is like, I'm going to live my fucking life. You live your fucking life. And I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. And not wearing the mask is a symbol of that. It's saying like, I I'm a free human being to make my own decisions. And this is what I'm deciding to do. And if you're going to tell me I'm a bad person for it or say that I should wear a mask, then, you know, quite frankly, fuck off. That's wow. That's basically the mentality. And, and that's how I feel about any, like, I don't judge someone who is wearing a mask. I might think, oh, it's silly, but I'm not going to go rip it off their face and tell them not to fucking wear it. Exactly. And I don't want them to do the same to me. You know, I don't want them to make me put on a muzzle just because they're wearing one. Yeah. I mean, how, how much has all this impacted your, your coaching business to kind of transition over to that? You know, at first it did, but when I sort of started embracing, because I always, I was always like, I don't want to be political. I'm a fitness nutrition coach, whatever. I'm going to leave that shit out of it. But I was kind of forced into it, to be honest, when, when I thought I was doing this 
innocent thing, putting up this video talking about science. And then I just got fucking canceled. Um, so I said, you know what? I mean, they've burned the boats for me. I'm just going to start talking about what I believe in. And since then, I mean, my following has grown. I've taken on more clients. And, you know, I think that in a lot of cases, it can be better to go all in on like 50% of the population versus trying to be in the middle and, and, you know, not really appealing to anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, Michael Jordan's quote, I've brought this up before on my podcast, um, is, uh, uh hey, sorry, oh, sorry. No, you're good. My dog out real quick. Sorry. No worries. I got a dog too. <clears throat> my bad brother my bad i forgot oh, to put her in the other room it's no awful. you're good brother i got i got dogs myself so um you know i kind of use that mentality of that michael jordan used of republicans buy sneakers too when people asked him why he didn't speak out against one side or the other and he just, he's like, I'm a businessman. I'm, I'm trying to sell things. And, you know, I, I used that mentality for a long time, but then ultimately, like I said, I was kind of forced into it, but also, man, it's, it's freeing, you know, like if, if you just speak truth and look, like, I know a lot of people aren't political. They don't want to talk about that shit. That's fine. But for me personally, I just felt the need to kind of talk about some of this stuff. And since I have people who identify with it, you know, embrace me that much more. And, you know, it's fine if, if half of people out there aren't interested in my message or me as a coach or whatever, because there's 7 billion people in the world. I think people are craving authenticity. I mean, yeah, this, I'm holding up my phone for everybody listening. I mean, this is everything I get on, everything I look at is almost fake. It yeah, just man. seems like, I mean, there's so much, I mean, in the business world, I mean, I'm sure you could attest to this. There's so many people that are you know, stand next to Lamborghinis that, you know, don't really own them. And, you know, it's just, the internet's just so fake. So I think people are just craving just authenticity and men and women who are standing up for, you know, what's right. Cause there's not that many people that are doing that right now. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's kind of the reason we started our podcast too, which um, is it's the man card podcast. And it's basically about, you know, masculinity in the modern era and what does it mean to be a man and sort of restoring those values of, of, you know, responsibility, protecting, providing all, all the sort of canonical male attributes. And, um, there's this, there's this whole message of toxic masculinity that perpetuates through society today. And, you know, we're sort of dispelling all of that and, and talking about like, you know, it's okay to embrace your manhood. If you're, if you're a young guy, you know, if you, if you feel as though you should suppress it because of like societal pressures, you know, we're here to tell you that you should not because we need all types of people, right? We need type a alpha fucking manly men. And we need, you know, guys who, who are not that, who are, who are less that. And, and um, it's okay. Like the whole point and the whole point of my messaging period is like, we are all okay. We should all be here. Humanity is a diverse set of all kinds of attributes. And we've sort of come into this era where we're being told that, you know, it's, it's a negative thing to be a big, strong, masculine guy or whatever. And, and you're frowned upon for being that. And, you know, guys like Ian and Sean and Aubrey Huff, you know, they're, they speak out against that, you know, um, as well. And, and that's sort of the point of the man card podcast is just to talk about those things that really young guys are uncomfortable talking about, because I get a lot of fucking messages from guys who are like, dude, how, how are you comfortable just talking about this stuff and, and dealing with the blowback? And I'm like, look, man, you just have to get to a place where you accept that this is, this is who you are and you're not going to let somebody change that about you. You know, and I've been through those phases as a young man. Like I went to a really, really left-leaning um, university for grad school and I felt like I had to try and fit in and I was fucking miserable. And, you know, we, we want to encourage young men to embrace what they feel compelled to be. And look, that goes both ways, man. If you feel like you want to be, you know, whatever, like, a, you know, I don't, I don't want to use any derogatory terms, but not like a, a manly man. That's cool too. Like we need every type of person. 
and um, that's that's what we talk about. And we have guests on. You know, you mentioned um, Ian. Uh, we're going to have Ian on. Sean Whalen. I've been in touch with him. We're getting him on next week. I'm recording with Seth Barosi, um, who has uh, All American Roughneck and Axe and Sledge supplements. So you know, we want to get these really strong male figures on to talk about these topics and to talk about how in the modern era of quote toxic masculinity they're still embracing who they are as men and you know we talk about other other things like it's okay to be emotional dude i i have a small daughter and if i watch a netflix cartoon with her that's sad i will cry like i'm here to fucking tell you right like i'm a 250 pound tattooed guy with a beard and a mohawk and i'm sitting there with my three-year-old daughter crying over moana you know but that's okay. And and yeah. we should embrace all aspects of what it is to be, to be a man and to be comfortable as a man. So that's sort of what I'm working on these days. That's very well said. Um, you remind me of Sean or not Sean, uh, Ryan Mickler. Are you friends with him? Yeah, yeah. Order of man. I know Ryan or I know who he is. I don't, I don't know him personally, but I've followed yeah. his stuff. Yeah, yeah. I follow his stuff too. I don't know him either, but he seemed like a cool dude. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we are where we are with a lot of the problems that we have is just a lack of, you know, good parenting or or bad parenting. I mean, men aren't being men. And that's kind of how it's always been since the beginning of time. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you eliminate, I think when you eliminate the variable of competition, you get softness and what you have is, is helicopter parenting. You have, um, uh, participation trophy mentality. You know, we live in a, in a bubble wrapped, tiptoey, non-offensive society where, you know, you never want your kid to get a boo-boo or be uh, offended about something or whatever. And it's like that crucible of humanity is what makes strong people. You know, I haven't met many people that I look up to who are successful in life that didn't face some adversity, you know, when they were growing up. And I mentioned, I have a daughter, like, I don't want to purposefully put her through, you know, a bunch of adversity, but I do want her to know what it's like to be responsible. I want her to appreciate what she has and I want her to know how to work hard for things. And we've eliminated a lot of that man from, from society and in everything from, you know, in our school systems, again, with, Hey, you were last place, but it's great. Here's a medal too, you know, to, to, um, you know, parenting where there's, there's no discipline. And I'm not talking about beating the shit out of your kid, but I'm talking about like yeah. disciplining them. You know, I'll give you an example. I take my daughter to the playground. Obviously there's a lot of kids there, a lot of parents there. And, you know, last time we were there, she brought a little toy. Uh, I forget what it was, but this other little girl comes up to her and snatches it from her. Right. And her parent is watching and says nothing to the kid, does nothing to discipline the kid. And so now I'm in this awkward position, right? Where I have to say something to the kid because she just took my daughter's toy away. Yeah. And the parent looked at me like, I'm crazy. I'm like, what? You weren't doing anything about it. You know, you, you have to teach them that that's wrong. And it, it's weird how parents are just so afraid of doing that these days. And, and um, like you said, it, it results in, in people who are softer. It results in, people who are less responsible. It results in people who take no accountability, you know? um, But what I would say to parents out there who are raising kids who are trying to do it the right way is like, you know, don't be, don't be pessimistic about it. I think if anything, look at it from the perspective of awesome. My kid's going to kick their kid's ass because I'm teaching them the right way to do things. going to be a lot of opportunity for that. If you know, if this continues like it is, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we see it even in like the corporate workplace, you know, with, with all of this, you know, sensitivity training and all this stuff. And it's like, look, man, we're adults, you know, you got to let us be adults and, and, and live, you know, and co- competition is a good thing. Like, it be, like it's this whole, I go back and forth with people all the time. I made a post this morning about, um, about somebody, you know, uh, saying that socialism sucks while using Twitter on their iPhone, drinking a latte from Starbucks, you know, taking advantage of all the comforts of capitalism while they talk about how, how socialism sucks. And it's this whole, it's the same thing. It's like capitalism is evil because it's competition and a hierarchy and all this stuff. And it's like, no, a meritocracy is the most natural, most fair system in which you can live, right? Where, hey, if I work hard, I'm successful. Great. If they work hard, if they beat me out, they're more successful. Great. 
you know, that, that is fairness. That's the definition of fairness, right? And imposing restrictions on that fairness where, Hey, I know little Timmy really worked fucking hard and I know he was the best out there, but we're going to make him feel like he wasn't. And he's just the same as little Dougie who didn't do anything and watched the butterflies while he was standing in the outfield. What does that do for little, uh, whatever the fuck Timmy, it makes him not work hard, right? Like, why do I keep working hard if my hard work isn't rewarded? No reason to. Right. Yeah. And it goes back to what you're saying about your daughter. I mean, you want your daughter to learn these lessons, but I mean, you can't just give it to her. She has to figure it out on her, her own pretty, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like that's part of the problem too, is parents have always just tried to give, 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 and make everything so easy instead of just letting people kind of go through the natural process of figuring it out like everybody right. else has. Right. And for me, it's a bit of a struggle because I did have a really rough childhood and I don't want her to experience that. Like I want to give her everything, but I think that you can do an injustice to your child by giving them too much and making them too comfortable. And, you know, like I'll see her, she'll, she'll be running around the house and I'm like, you're going to trip and fall. You're going to trip and fall, but I don't stop her. I let her keep running. She trips and falls and she learns a lesson, you know? So it's little things like that where, um, we got to stop bubble wrapping everything and, and protecting our kids from learning about life. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, that just has to be the cause of so many problems that we have now. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, we live in a crazy world right now. <laughs> well, because you, you start to see it now, man, with my generation. So technically I'm the millennial generation. You know, a lot of us in my generation, our parents were boomers. So, you know, they, they are of a specific ilk and a lot of people my age never, they were kind of the beginning of that protected soft childhood uh, bullshit. And so you'll see it in like the workplace now where people essentially feel entitled like to get a raise or to this or that. And it's like, well, wait, why do you? So I used to own a company that employed almost a hundred people. And um, it was in the hospitality industry, bars and restaurants. And I, it was in multiple states. Like I said, almost a hundred employees. A lot of my employees were in their mid twenties, you know, and I saw it every single day. You know, like, hey, why does why did they get a raise and I didn't? Oh, well, because they do a way better job than you. That's why. Yeah. But but I deserve a raise too. Why? Just for existing? No, that's not how this works. You work hard and you earn the raise. And it's like a foreign concept to people, even even, you know, 30 year olds like myself. So um, it's going to be a tough ship to turn around. I think obviously, you know, once it's in the head. Of, of someone and, and that's how they live their life. It's really tough to teach those lessons, but we got to do it, man. We got to do it. Yeah. That's something I was going to ask you later. Um, like what's the solution to all this? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, tr it's a tricky one. If there is one. the solution, I think, man, it starts at home with good parenting and, and raising your children the right way, you know, because even if, even if uh, my daughter, for example, again, let's use her as an example. If she gets out into the world, you know, 16 years from now, and it's the same, it's soft, no competition, whatever. But I've instilled in her those values and I've taught her how to be a strong individual. Like she's going to go out there and she's going to kick ass and she's going to show others how to kick ass and they're going to learn from her example. So, you know, despite what is happening in schools, in government, in society around us, you know, the very first place that you learn anything is at home, right? So like it starts at home and, and then, you know, we can continue, those of us with more of a public voice, continue to, to spread our message and try to influence people. You know, I, I have a very small influence, but I try to use it to, to talk about these important values. Um, and I think sort of hitting on all cylinders like that, you know, your podcast, my podcast, guys like Sean and Andy Frisella and, um, you know, Aubrey Huff and Ian Smith, you know, all these guys who are who are advocating this message of, you know, hard work, competitiveness, the traditional uh, value of masculinity and manhood. And, you know, obviously just the same with, with, uh, with women as well. I speak from the perspective of manhood because that happens to be what I am, yeah. but you know, um, I certainly don't discount half of the population and, and, you know, the, the value of a strong woman and, and all like, it's just, 
something that we have to attack, I think, from every angle, you know, and, and when, when we live in a society where our government is sort of forcing one thing on us, right? Like, it's tough, man. It's tough because the line between right and wrong becomes blurred to people because a lot of people sort of assume that what these authority figures are telling them is right. It's really hard to get through to someone like that. You know, if they're like, well, uh, Joe Biden says we should all wear masks. It's like, well, hold on a second. Let's dissect this a little bit, you know. Um, So it's tough, man. It's not going to be easy for sure, but I'm not giving up. Yeah. No, I think we definitely need more people like you that are, you know, have the courage to actually just stand up for what's right. When I think once you actually start doing that, you'll realize it's really not that, that crazy. I think most people are scared of what yeah. their, their friends might think. Like you mentioned, you had friends unfollow you and yeah. not want anything to do with, do with you and all that kind of stuff. Well, if you post them with a mask. People also have jobs, you know, and, and they don't want to lose their jobs. And like, you know, I had a podcast before that is no longer, um, there's no longer functioning because my co-host got fired from his job because we were talking about, you know, how BLM was destroying cities and, and the rioting was a bad thing. And, and, you know, just very, I don't know, I think uh, obvious facts about how, you know, you, if you care about black people, you shouldn't destroy black communities. I don't know. Just, just throw that out there. Yeah. Um, and, and he got fired from his job for that. So, you know, it's understandable why people won't speak up against the status quo, because look, if you, if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you believe that, uh, Antifa is bad, it's not worth it for you to say that if you're going to lose your fucking job and now you're out on the street. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. And on top of all that, you got the censorship. I mean, they just deleted president Trump's Twitter. And I think the president's not safe none of us are safe man exactly so. man. It's, it's crazy i mean these we have you know a couple tech companies that are more powerful than the president yeah who would have th- if you would have told me this like i'm i'm a young dude if you would have told me this 10 years ago that all this would be happening like i wouldn't even i would think this is all made up dude i was born in the 80s believe me it's really it's really weird to me but yeah it, look if if the president of the united states the most influential man in the world yeah. And just be canceled on a whim. Then that's really and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. This is not a right or left Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal thing. This is a freedom thing. Like if if he can be canceled, it's all well and good to folks on the left right now because it supports their mission, right? But you know what happens when a big influential figure on their side gets canceled right you've always got to remember that anything that can happen to your opposition can happen to you so it's a really dangerous game to start supporting the oppression of free speech for anyone okay for anyone and and that's been what's blown me away about all this is like take alex jones for example controversial guy yeah, yeah. controversial guy like a lot of people think he's crazy and look there's a ton of stuff he says that i think is fucking nuts do i think the guy should be canceled or deplatformed absolutely not man let him talk you know what you do with stuff like that with stuff you disagree with you talk in opposition to it you exercise your right to free speech and you voice why they're wrong and express your opinion and that's how this works it's a battle of ideas it's not i don't like you i'm turning you off that's not american yeah no i before you said this, I said the exact same thing about the whole, you know, cancel culture and censorship. I got a lot of, a lot of liberal friends. We're all friends, but same. We disagree about, yeah, I mean, we disagree about stuff and I say that to them every single time. I'm like, dude, what if they, what if this was reversed and they, you know, just deleted all Joe Biden stuff? Would you be pissed off right now? And they're like, oh, well, you know, Trump's, you know, inciting all this racism. I'm like, it's just crazy how some of these people just think. I mean, I think this is common sense. I mean, like you mentioned Alex Jones. I mean, you can't, he got pretty much banned from the internet. I mean, yeah. Off of YouTube. I think he has his website. Um, but he, gets I mean, on, he gets on Rogan from time to time, which gives him good yeah. exposure, but hilarious too, by the way. <laughs> oh dude, those are some of my favorites, but, but yeah, when you, the problem with it, man, is like when you start saying that th- these few large tech companies have carte blanche to silence whoever they want, then the problem is that there's no universal standard for what's good and bad. 
And, you know, human emotion is a spectrum. The human experience is a spectrum. Like I have what I think to be good and bad, and I have what I support and don't support, but I'm not going to stand here for one second and say that that's gospel and that's the ultimate truth. And that if someone doesn't believe that they shouldn't have the right to speak. That, that is dangerous, man. That's very dangerous. And, you know, there, there are some obvious things where we all draw a line, right? Like, you know, <laughs> murder is bad. You know, there's a few, a few things like that. But otherwise, man, you've got to let people speak. You've got to let people discuss their ideas and have discourse. And, you know, one of the reasons I love Joe Rogan so much and his show is because he's, he's the ultimate example of that. Like he'll have anybody on just to talk to them. And he gets so much heat for giving people a platform who other folks disagree with. And it's like, man, you're totally missing the concept of free speech. Like, yeah, talk to a white supremacist, talk to a, an Antifa member, talk to, you know, someone who's a leadership in BLM, talk to a Republican, talk to a Democrat, let them talk and get their ideas out there. And look, if their ideas are so bad, they're going to look stupid, right? That, that's the thing with bad ideas is that they are bad ideas. They're universally bad. What I think instead that, that fuels a lot of this is a general fear that folks who people disagree with will voice their ideas and others will get on board with it. That's where the fear lies, you know? So that's why Donald Trump has been silenced, for example, because a lot of people are on board with what he's advocating. And, and instead of battling that with better ideas, they just cut him off. They're like, we can't have people believe in what this guy says. We're going to cut him off. And that's dangerous, man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And it's kind of scary, too, because when it comes to, you know, Twitter or Facebook or, you know, Facebook and Instagram and all that, all these platforms, Google, all they have to do is change their terms of service and you can get blocked again if he comes back. I mean, so, I mean, nobody really reads that. And that's, you know, it's crazy. I mean, it's. Well, it's this weird situation where we have no precedent for this. These large tech companies have monopolies truly on communication, right? It's like owning town square. Um, and, and we've never encountered this before. So they're in this weird hybrid position of being a publisher and a utility, right? So a utility is like AT&T, Verizon, whoever. Like Verizon doesn't get to say, I don't like your conversation. I'm cutting the call off, right? Because they're a utility. They're just a platform that gets used. They're also not accountable for what you talk about, right? Like you can't talk about a bombing on your cell phone and Verizon gets blamed for it, right? Because they're a utility, they're neutral. Social media platforms are acting like a utility. They're the only means by which folks can communicate in a certain manner. However, they have editorial privilege, right? So like on the other end of that spectrum, you have like a magazine, right? They are responsible for their content. A website is responsible for its content and they get to delete and add whatever they want because they're responsible for that content. They're a publisher. Social media sites are kind of both. You know, they're these ubiquitous platforms that people use, but they also get to take down whatever they want and censor whatever they want. And they're not held accountable for the material on their site. So we need to decide are they either not going to be accountable for anything and they also can't take anything down like a utility or do they get to edit and take stuff down but they're held accountable for all the material on their site at that point yeah they get to play this weird purgatory between the two where they have the best of both worlds and that's why we've had the issues come up that we've had because what happens is the leadership at these country at these companies rather they're the size of countries but at these companies they obviously have their own beliefs and political leanings and, and everything else. And so they believe what's right is what they believe. Right. And, and that goes back to what I said, man. Like, I believe what, what I believe, but I'll never tell someone that what they believe is wrong and I'll never try to silence them. So that's the issue we've run into. And it's going to perpetuate until we do something about these social media platforms and their power. And, you know, obviously people like Candace Owens, you know, she's taking them on in a big way. And, you know, there are people who are fighting back, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. Well, the last guy we had on here, his name is Alejandro. Uh, he's with Turning Point USA with Charlie Kirk. 
Nice. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, we just need more people like that that are speaking up. I mean, it's, it's crazy that, you know, they can do, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, Twitter and Facebook, I mean, they're not, they're not private companies they're public, but I mean, if, if they can do whatever they want with the, the president of the United States account, why are businesses being locked down? It's just like, there's such a double standard with all this. It just, it, 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 it pisses me off. I mean, I'm sure it's probably the same way for you and most people listening that feel the same way as us. Um, Absolutely. I mean, it's, there's so much bigger than just, you know, businesses really. It's how we communicate. It's how we, you know, take our, it's, it's hard to explain. It's just a, a way of life. Pretty much Facebook is, you know, sad as it might be to say, you know, it's a huge part of our lifestyle in America and across the world. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's crazy, man. Um, it truly is. And now we've run into the issue where, you know, folks say, look, it's, it's a private company. You don't have to use that, that app, that social media interface. And that's like, okay, that's all well and good. So let's say I don't use Facebook anymore. But now what's happening is we have this issue with Amazon, like limiting web hosting for, for sites that they disagree with. Okay. So, so now it's like, what do I need to go create a new internet somewhere? Like where does this stop? You know, you have to have neutrality in terms of, you know, just object objectivity and allowing whoever to use your service. You don't get to be the arbiter of what's good and bad in the world. Yeah. And they just took down a parlor too, I think. Right. Yeah. From the Google, like from the Google store and all those places, like, you know, this is disturbingly becoming more and more like the book 1984 which was, you know, by George Orwell and talks about this dystopian future. And uh, man, it's, if you, like you said earlier, if, if you had, you know, been asked however many years ago, if it would be like this, you trust me when I tell you, like I, I lived, I was a kid in the nineties, like life was good, man. There was, you know, everybody was happy. Like we didn't have, you know, we weren't told that, if you're black and you go outside, you're hunted down. Or if you're white, you're a bad person. Or if you're, you know, this or that, it's like, we weren't spoon fed that narrative by anybody. And so, you know, what happens, you go out and you all live together happily and you don't really care about who's black or white. And, you know, life is good, but the media starts forcing this on us. And now we have all these different mechanisms through which they can do so through, through all the different social media platforms. And it's really, it's really, uh, changed the course of the collective mind of American society. You know, it's like, I think about how fucked up it is to be a black kid who is being told by everybody that it's so dangerous. It's so terrible out there for you. You know, the world is so bad and you're being held down. And look, if I was told all that shit, you know what I would think? Why even try, right? Why try to be successful? Why try to make something of myself? Right. But if you tell them, the world is your oyster, man. Like, get out there, fucking get after it. We're all equal. We all have the same opportunity. Like, whether you believe that or not as a parent, and, and that's a whole nother discussion, like, you got to give your kid this positivity so that they're going to go out and make something of themselves. But if we continue to tell people they're a victim, they're going to live their life like a victim, right? And I speak from experience here because my parents had a victim mentality. You know, my mom lived off of fucking welfare until I was an adult and she probably still is now, but I don't have, I don't keep in touch with her. And she just lived this victim mentality. And and that was a big reason why I left it, you know, and and was so opposed to it. Just always talking about how, you know, the government's trying, you know, hold her down and all this stuff. And I'm like, you're an able-bodied adult. Why aren't you working somewhere? You know, I don't understand this, but it's that victim mentality of like, we lived in a fucked up system. Why should I even try? Let me just take my benefits that they're going to give me and, and, you know, live forever like that. And it's, it's not good, man. It, it doesn't encourage entrepreneurship. It doesn't encourage making something of yourself. You know, anyway, that's a whole nother thing, but it, that goes back again to parenting. So there's probably a pretty common thread here of it all fucking starts at home. It really does. It really does. And when people and they, a lot of times people have bad parents that teach them the wrong stuff or nothing at all, and they go to school. And you know, I, when I was in school, I had all these liberal professors that were telling me all this and stuff that, and how men are bad, and how Republicans and you know capitalism are evil. It's it's crazy, man. It's like a it's like they're brainwashing people. Yeah. Or people just don't think and ask questions. People don't talk like we are right now. 
right. that's kind of the common theme of every single podcast episode I've done. It's like just people don't talk. Right. They, they like, don't. Well, people will talk, but they'll talk in their own echo chamber with people who have the same beliefs. I mean, you know, yeah. look, we're an example of it right now. You and I have similar beliefs. You know, where the real progress is made is if you can get someone on here who has different beliefs than you and have a civil conversation. You, you know, nobody's going to change anybody's minds at the end of it, but it's it's important to put those ideas out there and examine them and talk about why they're good and bad from different perspectives. And, you know, we have that more and more. We have two sides that are just talking to one another where this is where the progress is made right here in the middle. I forgot we're not going to show video, but, you know, um, basically the right and the left have to talk to each other, you know, and um, we're becoming more and more distanced and you know guys like ben shapiro talk about it where you know he can see a future where you know there's just businesses that are only supported by the right and businesses that are only supported by the left and and um you know i hope it doesn't come to that you know i i do hope that we can coexist and and communicate and you know i think the fact of the matter man is that what you have represented in media is just the loudest voices and it's it's the it's not the majority of folks i think a lot of americans are in the middle you know and they're like they're like yeah give me my guns but let you know let let gay marriage happen like you know abortion is is bad but also hey you know give poor people welfare like you know there's all kinds of people who fall in the middle on all those things and they feel alienated because they're like well i have no political home because you have the far left and the far right duking it out in social media. And here I am just trying to make my paycheck and get my kids into into college. So, you know, I'm optimistic that that we can come together and just talk, like you said, and uh, that's where it's going to start. But gosh, man, it's, it's tough. Like, I'll use myself as an example. I held up a sign that said, we can disagree and still be friends. And I got fucking raked over the coals for it. Like, I mean, I was I was being called a terrible person for holding up a sign with like the most friendly message ever, right? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. insane. And people are just like, whatever, you white piece of shit. And I'm like, what are why are you so mad? <laughs> you know, like what is wrong? And um, and 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 it's just this sort of this mentality of everybody just always looking for something to be mad at looking for something to offend them like it's okay guys you don't have to be mad about everything you know we we can let's live our lives and and try to raise one another up but until we can get to that point man i don't know no i I completely agree with you about the echo chambers and everything else it's a great point trying to just speak to people and and understand them instead of trying to win the argument or not even argument the discussion people try to win and they have to be on a side i'm either left or i'm right like right I think that's where, like you said earlier, I think that's where all the progress happens when you just don't align with any of that kind of stuff. Okay, okay, Dave, you feel this way. Why do you feel this way? Let me explain why I feel the same or different way. I mean, people just need to talk and communicate. And I mean, I think a lot of that kind of stuff would just help us to realize that we're a lot more alike than we think we are. I mean, you know, we all want to make more money. We all want to be able to do what we want. We all want to be able to, you know, have fun, you know, raise a family, et cetera. We all want that. So why are we fighting so much? You know, why is this all this butting heads? I mean, I think people are just, it's, it's manufactured division. I think there's, you know, people that are, have vested interest in seeing us being divided. It's, yeah, it's I, I agree. And I also think um, to an extent, part of it is uh, we, we have it pretty damn good. Like all of us have it pretty damn good in this country. And I think what happens when people, have no real problems because human beings are problem solving creatures. We are, we are, we want to, to overcome problems when you don't have problems, like real problems, like surviving and, you know, shelter and food and and all this, like you start to create problems because you need problems to, to solve. And, you know, the better things get in a society, the crazier those problems have to be, right? Like, gender bathroom stuff or you know all all the stuff that we get up in arms about now we can only get up in arms about that shit because we're not worrying about surviving and and all the things that we've historically as a species had to worry about right like we have no big problems 
If you're alive today in the world, today, period, you're in the top 1% wealth-wise in history ever. You're in the top 1% of humanity, period. It's the best time to live. And with that comes, well, here I am twiddling my thumbs. Life is good. I got my iPhone. I got food in my belly. You know, okay, let me find something to bitch about. And I think some of it is that too, man. You know, I, I completely agree. We have it too easy. I think that's one to kind of kind of tie it back to fitness. I mean, that's one of the reasons why working out and all that kind of stuff is so important because when you don't, I mean, your body doesn't work as well. Personally, I can't think as well. I feel like I'm about to go crazy if I haven't worked yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, people just need to struggle. I mean, I know, you know, Joe Rogan talks about this a lot. Joe Rogan's the OG podcaster. Yeah. I mean, struggle is it's a part of life and it's it's just as important as, you know, being comfortable and doing everything else. What makes that, you know, pleasurable. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and fitness is a great way to do that for yourself. You know, battle it out in the gym of stead, instead of on your keyboard. Yeah. You know? Just just go put yourself through through some hardship physically, overcome that hardship, and you will feel more satisfied and you'll be healthier for it. You know, and, and yeah. I think people they seek out the they seek out problems in the wrong places and look who am i to say what the wrong or right place is but like you said i think i think physical um struggle is a great way to to sort of satisfy that human need instead of you know complaining about 87 genders or whatever <laughs> yeah and you just don't give a shit afterwards man i mean once right. you just leave it all out there you're not in a bad mood afterwards you know exactly people just need to calm down i mean there's so much division, so much hate. That's one of the reasons I want to do this podcast, just talk to more people like you. I mean, and just see what's going on. I mean, it's just, it's, we live in a scary world right now, but I think that people are starting to, I think that people, I, I think that people are starting to wake up a little bit, hopefully. Think, but, you know, one, one thing about a, um, having such a connected global society essentially now is, is that you, you can get new perspectives and you can see, you know, like for example, going back to us creating struggles for ourselves and talking about how bad it is in America. You know, there's people saying that and genuinely believing it while at the same time in China, there are actual concentration camps. Okay. Actual concentration camps for Uyghur Muslims where the men are sterilized, you know, all these horrible things are happening. This isn't 1942. This is 2021. There are concentration camps in China. OK, there are child slaves making your fucking iPhone. If you want to worry about real problems and get up in arms about real problems, there's plenty out there in the world. But it's not whether or not Starbucks has a gender neutral bathroom, you know, yeah. Wor worry about the real shit that's going on. There's more slavery present in current day Africa than there was during during the Jim Crow South. Like there's so many issues that are prevalent today that could really use people's attention. But it gets back to the convenience factor, and they're not truly trying to solve the world's wrongs. They just need a pedestal on which they can stand and signal their virtue so they feel better about themselves at the end of the day. Like Colin Kaepernick. Dude, if you really care about slavery, there's a lot fucking happening in Africa right now. You don't have to talk about reparations and, and the stuff that happened in the past. There's a lot of human injustice now. you know. But people don't want to tackle real problems. They want to just sleep better at night for feeling good about saying something. You know, putting a black square on their fucking Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I'm cursing so much. I, I forgot to ask Wait, if I was allowed to. Dude, but, yeah, you be you, man. It's, I curse okay. all the time. Okay, I, I completely agree, man. People just want to bitch about shit. They don't want to actually do anything. I mean, you can see this in people's lives. I mean, people complain about money all the time, but they watch four or five hours of TV every single day. I mean, people just don't really give a shit about. You know, I yeah. think that people there's a quote unquote romantic, you know, feel about you know fighting for something, and you know. Mm -hmm. I'm standing up for what's, you know, quote unquote, right. And, you know, just being on a side, I think that people think they have to be on a side yeah. and, you know, this whole, I mean, it, it pisses me off because people think that, that, you know, posting a black square is, you know, you know, doing anything. Well, you mentioned so much it. going on in the world, not to interrupt you. No, you're good, buddy. Yeah. Um, I got into it with someone who, who messaged me about that. They were like, you should be, you should post a black square. You should use your platform to support this cause. You know, you know, what are you do, doing to help the, and I was like, look, let me tell you something. 
a year from now, that black square you posted will have changed nothing for nobody. But here's what I did. I built a multi-million dollar business that employed probably 50 black Americans. That's what I fucking did. So sorry I didn't post a black fucking square, but maybe you can do things that will actually help improve the lives of black Americans instead of just something that's going to make you feel good and warm and cozy at night. Ooh, I put a black square on my Instagram. Give me a fucking break. Yeah. Sorry, that just really drives oh. me crazy. But No, man, it pisses me off too. And a lot of people, a lot more than I think we realize. A lot more people are upset and I think they agree with, you know, they don't have to agree with me and you. But I think people are starting to ask more questions. I think that's what really matters. And yeah. we're starting to, you know, again, question, you know, why am I being fed, you know, all this information about, you know, I think Little Wayne, um, I think he mentioned one time, he's like, I never really dealt with any racism. He's like, I, I walked out into the stage one time to go do a concert and every single person in the, in the stands was white. Right. So it's like, I don't know, man. I think that people are starting to wake up a little bit. I, I really do believe that. Um, there's, I can only speak from my experience. There's a lot of, a lot more people that are around my, I'm 22, a lot more people that are around my age that think like us and that are asking questions and starting to wake up a little bit more than we kind of, you know, give credit to. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's not going to be an easy thing to solve. It's, it's tricky. And, you know, who knows where we're going next, but you know, yeah, like you mentioned and, and Sean Whalen, we're plugging everybody on the show. Um, and everybody, like they all talk about, you got to get your house in order. You got to take care of your own shit, wake up, put your shoes on every single day, take care of business. That's all you can take care of. That's all you can control. Well, it's like, uh, Jordan Peterson says, you know, you, you've got to take care of yourself before you try and take care of the world. Yeah. You know? And we have people, you know, sitting in fucking dumpy apartments surrounded by pizza boxes and empty Mountain Dew bottles talking about how socialism can save the world. And it's like, how about you save yourself first? You know, you want socialized medicine, but you're morbidly obese. So you want me to pay for your health bills just because you can't take care of yourself? You know, get your priorities in order. L live a decent life and then talk about having a decent world. Mm -hmm. And all the, the health officials that are trying to push all this stuff. And they're some of the most unhealthy people I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that whole thing I mean, is crazy. <laughs> it's such a double standard. And, Man. you know how bars and all this kind of stuff can be open and are protected and, you know, gyms or people are trying to get better and move forward and become more healthy, which is what you should be worried about in the first place instead yep. of you know taking a vaccine or anything like that. I don't know, man, there's so much nonsense. We can go on about this for days. Forever, <laughs> man, forever. I know we're probably getting close to, to uh, time, so I don't want to keep ranting, but, um, but yeah, man, that's, that's again, starts at home. You know, starts at just just teaching your kids and and teaching them how to be responsible, how to um, be competitive, you know, and, and how to at the same time be empathetic and, and care for others. And I mean, just be a good just be a good human, like just be a yeah. good human. That's all it comes down to, man. Completely agree, man. Um, awesome, man. So to wrap this up, your training business, your podcast, where can people find you? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram at I am Dave hurt. Um, my, my coaching business is at just work co. Um, and, I, um, my podcast is at the man card podcast. So those are where you can find us on Instagram. The podcast is on all major platforms. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, I appreciate your time. And, and, uh, this was great. Definitely, man. I'm going to link all that. Um, all those in the show notes, the podcast. So people that are listening, you guys can just scroll down and find all that. Mm -hmm all the links. Uh, Dave, do we need more people like you in the world, man? Thank you so much for coming on, brother. Likewise, man. Look, I'm, I'm an older guy now. We need more people that are your age that are talking about these things. So I appreciate you.